Action! I said shake, rattle and roll. 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 So shake, rattle and roll is basically an idea that me and Taylor thought of together. We really both enjoy the kind of cruising culture, late 1950s. You know, I was gonna buy one of these bad boys myself. Just need a pretty lady to sit next to me. We started talking about it, thinking up ideas, and we really wanted to incorporate the cars and the music of the era. Listening to the music, with reading the script, I was like, yeah, this, this, this is fun. This would be fun. I got the script. I really enjoyed it. I got to meet with everybody. We did a couple of table reads. Why don't you come with? I'll swing by your place. The action cuts back to the car and shows Dick throwing Harry in the trunk. Ideally, when we were writing it, we pictured a drive-in diner with a whole mm -hmm. bunch of cars. That was what we envisioned, but we're like, yeah. you know, realistically, I don't know if we can do this, but let's try. And so we looked around for locations in the Clemson area, and we found Max Drive-In, and it was May, it was established 1956. We just looked around and decided, yeah, we could we could pull this off and make this look like it's the 1950s. We didn't ask him that night. We mm -hmm. were like, let's come back tomorrow and just, you know, pop the question yeah. pretty much. Can we use this? Because it'd be huge. If we didn't get Max Drive-In, we had no idea where we were going yeah. next. After we got Max, we just said, hey, we're out here, we're on a roll, let's just start driving around looking for houses. Now it's time to get the house. Let's go. Then we would just find a house, say, hey, this looks good, and then go up to it, knock on the door, and probably the first six houses, we, we knew there were people home, but they didn't, they didn't ever answer, they didn't ever let us in. So um, we just kept driving around, and eventually we found a house that looked like it was from the 50s, and it was a college student. He um, opened the door, he said, yeah, sure, that'd be cool, and it, it turns out that, um, Chris Berry, uh, the actor who played Roger, actually knows the people who live in the house. He's good friends with them. And with that, all the locations are done. We are obviously very stoked and we're like, all right, check. Now we've got these cars we've got to worry about. In the script, it called for a 1955 Chevy Bel Air Candy Blue. That was written because I had been to a auto shop here in Clemson called um, Big V Automotive, and I knew that the owner owned one of those cars. And so I went in and uh, basically me and Taylor asked him, can we use this car for our, um, our film? And surprisingly enough, just like Mac, he was completely on board. We were just gonna have this one 55 Chevy, but we decided, you know, just in order to really sell it, to be in the 1950s, we needed more. Sent out probably 50 emails um, asking people, just typing in Craigslist, 1951 uh, vehicles, 1952, 53, all the way up to 1959, and shooting them an email saying, we're shooting on March 12th at this time at Max Drive-In, please come by. Just watching all of the extras show up, watching all the cars show up was, it was so neat because it was like, oh my gosh, this is real. But once the cars started rolling in on, a, on shooting day, it looked like a real drive-in, and that was pretty cool. The extras were all friends that we were like borderline harassing, just texting everybody we knew, hey, please come out and be an extra tonight. I'm getting ready to be an extra, best extra you've ever seen, coming at you from the CLEM neighborhood. Let's go. All the food there was from a Cle from Clemson Dining Hall. I was almost thinking for some of the extras, could we get away with large strawberry milk mix in a milk glass with cream on top? something like 28 degrees that night and Adrian and I both had short sleeve shirts on for our costumes so between shots we'd run inside and grab our coats. This okay. isn't California. Yeah, it's it's like freezing that. right now. If you guys are going to be standing here. <laughs> on the first night of shooting I was locked in the trunk for I think 26 minutes. All right we're gonna let you out. <laughs> you a nice trunk. Yeah it was a little warm in there. It wasn't it was more warm. It was nice it was a little bit warmer in there than it was outside so I, I couldn't complain. So 10 years from now, the one thing that I will definitely remember is driving that 55 Bel Air through Clemson. Um, that was an experience. And make that loop about eight times to get the shots right. Horace was there like kind of directing traffic. I guess you could say we blocked off a street and just kind of stopping people on the sidewalk so they didn't walk by. And you know, telling us when to go when the camera was ready. It was very run and gun, just go, go, drive, drive. It was really cool being able to, um, you know, work with, I guess, a big prop that was from that era. The first fight practice we had to establish what, what how the fight was going to play out was uh, just a big padded room where basically just everybody wrestled. 
trying to figure out what worked and what didn't. Flat. Boom. Start music. He goes down. You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. Too much love. Because it's tough to get fight noises live, we had to go back in in post production and record fight sounds to, to be put in over. So we were just in a, a sound booth going, hur, 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 watching the uh, watching the video. It was pretty funny. Ah! Mm. <laughs> oh, this is so weird. <laughs> oh my god. Roger, get him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, so uh, having to come back and do the audio to overdub some of the video that we took. Um, I, I'm gonna be honest, I forgot a lot of my lines. Say what you doing out here? Off your shift? I just blanked. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, that's alright. Let's try it again. Because I had to match up my audio with the, my lips moving on screen. So it was just, it was interesting to just try to do this. We did like three or four takes for each thing after rehearsing it like five extra times. Told you to stop. Told you to stop. Now get in there. <laughs> that was the first time I'd ever seen the video, uh, any edited clips or any, um, you know, cuts of stuff together, and I think they did a wonderful job. Technology-wise, um, we didn't have to pay a cent for any of the equipment we used. All our drone operators were great. They were, they were able to fly and get some great shots for us, and nobody really asked for anything in return. They were, they were there to help. They were having fun with it, and we really could not have done it without them. And this was really all about just everyone coming together and enjoying the process, and really the reward was just making it happen, mm -hmm. and that's what we did. Shake, rattle, and roll. Hey!